Welcome back to the Anchor Down Leadership Podcast. I'm Dustin Mills, your host, founder of Anchor Down Leadership LLC, and head football coach James M. Bennett High School. As always, first of all, I want to thank you for tuning in this week. I think this week's going to be a, a real important episode that I think will hopefully help a lot of people. Um, as you can tell, it's a little bit different setting this time. I'm not sitting at my desk. I'm not reading from the computer. This one's a little bit more um, off the cuff, so to speak, but I think it's going to be a topic that matters to, well, frankly, all of us, um, especially everything that's going on in the world today. Um, one thing as leaders and as people that we are always going to struggle with, that we're going to see issues with, not just as the leader, but we're going to see in our followers is mental health issues. What do I mean by that? Anxiety, stress, depression, all those things, right? And sometimes we can't even help it. And it's people you wouldn't necessarily expect, right? Recently in the news, you saw Dak Prescott, the quarterback from the Dallas Cowboys, America's team, so to speak. Um, you may not agree, but it is one of the more high profile positions in professional athletics. He spoke up about some mental health issues he had during COVID. Uh, his brother took his own life and that had really impacted him. And while there was a lot of people who tended to uh, sympathize with him, there were some talking heads that spoke out and really blasted him for saying those things. And I was really stricken by that and almost offended. You know, I think one thing as leaders that, you know, we always need to be willing to do, no matter what I say for the rest of this video, this is the first thing I would tell you. If you are struggling with any mental health issues, please, please, please reach out. Maybe not to a mental health professional, but to friends, to family. Don't be afraid to talk to them. You know, as leaders, a lot of times, maybe we're, we're, we're reticent or we're saying, well, we got to be seen as tough. We got to be seen as, you know, the one who doesn't crack under pressure. Well, that brings its own set of mental health issues. And is especially, I'm talking to you guys right now, you fellas as men, right? There's this idea that, hey, we need to be tough. We can't let people see that we're weak. Guys, that's nonsense, all right? We gotta be smarter than that. We gotta take care of ourselves as well as take care of our people. If we're dealing with mental health issues, if we're stressed to the max, if we're overwhelmed with anxiety, how can we be effective leaders? Quite frankly, we can't. We can't just say, uh, oh, everything's fine, we're gonna be fine, and, and show other people the way. As a matter of fact, when you do reach out and people know you're struggling with some of those stress issues, those mental health issues, it's actually going to, in my opinion, give you more legitimacy in their eyes. They're gonna say, hey, he's human, and he struggles with a lot of the same things that we do. So he can empathize with us. He understands, they understand where we're coming from. And I think it will only help strengthen those bonds with your followers. So that's my number one thing, man. If you've got, if you're experiencing any sort of overwhelming stress or mental health issues or things like that, do not hesitate to reach out and talk to somebody. It does not make you weak. As a matter of fact, in my opinion, it makes you smart and stronger because you are willing to ask for help. For the rest of the video, there's kind of some things I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about a couple different ways to handle stress. I'm going to talk about a practical way, and then I'll touch on uh, some philosophical things that will maybe help you understand. Maybe there's not a reason to stress. Maybe there's not a reason to be overwhelmed with that anxiety. Um, you know, maybe there is not a reason to say sacrifice your mental health. And I think that's important to know as leaders. And in full disclosure, I struggle with these things, gang. I struggle with, with stress. I struggle with anxiety. So this is all stuff that I have learned. I have experienced that I have dealt with myself. Maybe not to the extreme issues that some of the rest of you may have or will experience. But I've certainly dealt with my own issues. And I've found ways to deal with them. I have found ways to become comfortable with what's going on and to kind of push some of that stress, push that anxiety, and make my mental health much better. And we'll go over some of those ways today. Um, you know, the first thing I would say is you need to respond to that stress and that anxiety in the moment. It's easy when that stress, that anxiety hits us for us to say, well, I'll just deal with it later. Okay, well, I got to get through this and then I'll deal with it later. And what happens is <laughs> we don't deal with it later, do we? No, we, we suddenly get caught up in something else and something else and that, that stress is like compounding interest, right? For all of you who are into uh, banking and economics, right? It just exponentially gets worse and worse and worse before all of a sudden we're going, oh crap, we're in over our heads, right? And we, so we got to kind of nip it in the bud. One of the ways I can, I've found to do this, um, 
Jocko Willink has a book, uh, Strategy and Tactics, Leadership Strategy and Tactics, or something along those ways. And the very first chapter, he talks about a concept called detach, where he was in a stressful situation, right? They, they were training on an oil rig as Navy SEALs. And even though he was the most junior guy in, in the, the group there, in that unit, they were doing something and everybody froze. And he, all he did was take a physical step back and realize no one's making a decision. He gave out an order as the most junior guy and everybody listened, right? So he calls that the concept of detach. And I think that's something we can apply to our own lives, right? When you start to feel that anxiety, when you start to feel that stress, step back, physically remove yourself from that situation for the time being. Maybe you can't do it right that second, but as soon as you get a chance, physically remove yourself, right? If we're, if we're in a game, we get breaks between quarters. We get a, a significant halftime, right? We can take a timeout and gather ourselves. Because I assure you, if you're feeling that stress and anxiety, your people are feeling it too. And you need to take care of them, number one. So detach, step back. If you're in a meeting, excuse yourself to the restroom. Say, I'll be right back, I gotta go use the bathroom. Just go to the bathroom, just breathe, focus, relax. Let, don't let that stress overwhelm you. As soon as you start to feel that pressure, right? You can feel it in your chest. You can feel it in your gut. Detach. Step back. Find a peaceful place real quick. You know, yeah, a bathroom. Peaceful, right? It's away from everybody else. You know, maybe if you're a coach um, at the quarter break, at the halftime break, take that first 30 seconds to just stand by yourself away from everybody else. Breathe. Relax. Gather your thoughts. Not only will it help lower your stress level, it will increase your clarity of thought, which is what we want as a leader, right? We want to be able to make the correct decisions at the moment they're needed. Well, if we're overwhelmed with stress, we can't make that decision. So physically detach yourself from the situation. Go somewhere else, recover, relax, then come back and say, okay, here's what we're going to do, or come back and handle the situation. You know, as far as breathing and things like that, it's something you need to be conscious of. You need to be aware of your body. You know, I carry a lot of stress, you know, in my upper back. And when I feel myself tense up, I know, hey, whoa, relax. Find those cues in your body. Maybe it is a shortness of breath. Maybe it is, you know, you're clenching your fists. Maybe it's a blood pressure issue. Whatever it might be, find those physical cues in your body that you know that stress, that anxiety, that depression is starting to hit you and detach from that. Breathe. Relax through your breathing. I have a fellow co-teacher who I have the utmost respect for between every class. We have a five-minute exchange between classes. He takes about three minutes. He goes and he sits in his cubicle by himself, and he just breathes, closes his eyes, and you could call it meditation. Uh, I think that maybe gives some people the wrong idea. You know, we're not trying to reach a higher plane of existence, but by closing his eyes and relaxing, just focus on his breathing, it allows him to deal with whatever happened last class and be better for the next class. We should take the, that skill on ourselves as leaders. We should say, hey, take those five minutes, those three minutes, whatever it might be. It doesn't have to be an extended amount of time. Force your body to relax. Give yourself clarity of thought. Focus on your breathing, and that will help you in that moment, right? If the other people around you are doing that, okay, if the other people around you are, are getting overwhelmed by stress, right, we've all been in those high-stakes situations, you know, as a football coach, we've been in that tied game with time winding down in the fourth quarter. We've had that fourth and one situation. We've had that player have to make those free throws to seal the game, whatever it might be. Teach this to your people, right? We've been in those work environments where we have to make a decision. Are we going to spend this much money? Eh, you know, teach this to your people share this with them so when they start to feel that stress they do the same thing which will then help you as the leader de-stress right as leaders a lot of times we empathize with our people we should be empathizing we should be seeking to understand their feelings and it's easy sometimes to wear their stress it's easy sometimes to wear their anxiety find a way to teach them that immediate skill that ability to detach and then let them relax, which will then also help you relax as well. You know, that, that's something that you can do right there in the moment that I have found has helped me tremendously as a leader, whether it's on the field, whether it's in the classroom, uh, whether it's up front talking to people. Making these videos makes me nervous. I can feel it right here in my gut. But at the same time, you know, I know that and I've controlled myself and I've been able to focus my breathing so that I can hopefully 
be more uh, natural on camera. I can hopefully present more information, have clarity of thought, especially this one, right? Just kind of off the cuff. Um, I want it to be professional. I want it to be good. It's giving me a little bit of anxiety right now. But I do that so that I can have clarity of thought. Now, what else can you do kind of in the midterm, right? So that's kind of in the immediate. What are some other things that you can do in the midterm to kind of help manage uh, that mental health issue, that anxiety, that stress? There's a lot of different things, guys. Um, there's some people who won't agree with me on this, okay? There's some people who really love being dominated by what they do. I'm a firm believer you need to be able to separate away from what it is you do, whether it's coaching, teaching, uh, whether it's running a corporation, whether it's a mid-level manager, uh, whatever it is that you might do, you might own your own business, okay? You have to find a way to get away from that. You have to find a way to leave work at work, to leave football at football practice. Because what happens is when we go home, and, and th I had a real problem with this when I was a younger coach. I was possessed by it 24-7. How can we get better? How can we get better? And that's great, but as I got older, I started to understand I need to be able to step back because when, you know, there's, it's kind of counterintuitive, right? Well, if we think about it all the time, we'll find those right results. But what I found is when I did other things away from football, when I did other things away from basketball or softball or lacrosse or any of the other things I've coached, or when I did things away from teaching, it made me a better leader. Why? Because I was relaxed. I had that mental clarity. I said, hey, right now I'm stepping away. I'm going to leave that there and I'm going to go do something else. I'm going to go spend time with my family. I'm going to go see a movie. You know, whatever it might be, find a way to be able to detach. You know, you, you hear all these these stories about, uh, you know, coaches and leaders working late hours of the night, showing up early in the morning and, and all that's great. But inevitably with a lot of those coaches, you hear about burnout or you hear about them changing their mindset as they're in the profession for a little bit longer. And I think that's a key part of this because we think the harder we work, the better the result. But we don't want to encourage work. We want to encourage productivity. And how do we increase, increase productivity as a leader? We separate away from what we're doing. We get away from what it is we do and we find another way to take joy in our life. We find joy in other things and that helps us to relax. Again, if Teach your people to leave work at work. Um, you know, I work with a, a lot of teachers, and God bless them. They work hard, man. This digital education in 2020, it is stressful, to say the least. And it's not so much with the kids. It's with everything else we have to deal with, all the emails we get about paperwork and making sure your lessons are this and your lessons are that. And I get it. I understand why we get those emails. But it's easy to get overwhelmed. And teachers, a lot of them, especially younger teachers, right, they stay at school till four, five, six o'clock, and then they take papers home to grade them all weekend, and then they come back on Monday. And by December, whew, they're, they're done. And then they struggle the rest of the year. I remember my first year teaching, okay? So I was a substitute teacher for like seven years before I became a, a real teacher, right? Uh, there's a long story there I'll tell another day. My first or second weekend as a teacher, I'm grading quizzes, sitting, in a Buffalo Wild Wings trying to watch NFL Sunday Ticket with one of my best friends. That was miserable. That was absolutely miserable. I didn't enjoy anything about that. I didn't enjoy food, and I, I enjoy food, guys. I didn't enjoy the games. I didn't enjoy the time I was spending with my friend. It was miserable, and it was at that moment I said, you know what? I'm going to find ways to be more efficient in my life so I don't have to take things home, so I don't have to grade papers, papers on weekend." weekends. Has, have I stuck to that 100%? No. There's been times where inevitably I have to do things. But by and large, I've been able to adhere to that. And I think it's actually made me a better teacher because I'm not burned out. I'm not worn out. I'm able to go into my classroom on Monday morning and I'm fresh, man. I'm ready to go. I'm able to go in my classroom on Thursday morning and say, hey guys, happy Thursday. You know, today's an asynchronous day for us, meaning we don't have to meet with students on Zoom. It's a fancy education word. And I'm excited to go in tomorrow and see my students. You know, I can't say that for everybody in years past. They might be doing copious amounts of work right now on, on Wednesday to try and make things better. And I've done my job today. At least I've done my job to the best of my ability, in my opinion. But I've also been able to spend time doing other things, which will make me a better teacher tomorrow. And I think that's important to keep in mind as leaders. 
we have to be able to take time away. Find hobbies, okay? And that's an important thing. And it, I don't care what the hobby is, right? Um, you know, some of my hobbies include, you know, uh, you know, I'm into to nerd alert, first of all. I'm into things like tabletop wargaming. Yeah, you know, you move the little guys around the board. You know, it keeps my brain thinking, but I'm not thinking about other stuff going on. Um, I recently took up the idea of getting into bow hunting. Again, not with some primal urge to go out and, and hunt stuff, but being in the trees, man, being in the forest, being out in the woods, there's this massive amount of tranquility and peace that really seeps into me. And I'm able to say, I'm at, I'm comfortable here and I'm at peace and it helps me to relax and it allows me to focus on other things as well. And sometimes I found that when I'm doing those other things, I have aha moments about the stuff that I, that I do for work, the stuff that I do for my career, that stuff that I'm in charge of as a leader. And I go, that's a great idea. I write it down and then I put that in place. Those aha moments may not have happened to me if I was busy, you know, grinding. I, I hate the word grinding. We as leaders need to remove that from our vocabulary, from our lexicon. I, that word makes me shudder. You know, think about what it means. When you grind something, you're tearing away. You're taking away from that material, right? If you're grinding down metal, the idea is you're removing part of that metal. As leaders, that's not what we want to do. We don't want to remove part of us, all right? We don't want to take away from who we are. We want to have enough to be able to give to other people. So when we're grinding, or if we ever feel like we're grinding, then we're probably doing too much. We're probably trying to be that overachiever instead of taking a step back and saying, okay, let me relax. Let me focus on something else for a little while and find you know, something else to do. Allow my brain to separate and you might have those aha moments that make you a better leader. You know, reading is a big one for a lot of people. Netflix has become huge in recent years. You know, yes, it's mindless. Yes, it's a way to, to, to kind of waste time, but it gets you away. It gets you focused on something else. Now, I firmly believe don't spend all your time doing uh, visual things, <laughs> Netflix and uh, gaming and that sort of stuff, because I think that also leads to another issue of mental health. But at the same time, use that temporarily to get away. And the big one that I'll, I'll always preach about is exercise, man. Exercise to me is probably the best way to manage stress uh, regularly, right? Set up a regular exercise program. And, you know, I've had times in my life where I've done a lot of exercise and times in my life where I've had have le have less exercise. And I find in those times that I do less working out and less exercise, it really takes away from who I am as a leader. I get stressed. I get worn out. My mental health wears down. If we want our mental health to be positive, if we want to have the right frame of mind and have that positive mindset and that, that mindset of achievement that we want to pass on, that mindset of greatness that we want to pass on to our people, we got to make sure that we take care of our own minds. So find something else. Find hobbies. Find things to do that help you relieve that stress. And that's kind of that midterm, so to speak. The, the last little bit I'll touch on is largely philosophical. And, you know, for those of you who've been listening and watching for a little while, know I like to talk about a lot of philosophical things and I know they're kind of heavy. And so hopefully this one is a little bit more, uh, less of that, but I do want to touch on this a little bit. And it's something I, I talked about last week, right? And that's having that process based mindset, knowing that stress is natural, right? Anxiety is going to happen and we need to be able to find a way to overcome that. But we also need to understand that the obstacles that are causing that stress, the struggles that are causing that anxiety are part of the process of development, okay? We've talked about this before. Struggles allow you to become stronger. Think about just lifting weights or sprinting, right? When it comes to lifting weights, you legitimately are tearing apart your muscles to then make them stronger, okay? You're not taking away, right? That's grinding. You're, you're, you're tearing apart your muscles to then rebuild them and make them stronger. So you have to suffer a little bit in order to become better. But when you understand that that's part of growth, that that's part of process, it can give you a peace of mind to say, hey, it's okay right now that I'm struggling. It's making me stronger. You know, I recently had to deal with this. I was getting a bit overwhelmed and I was just saying, man, this is, this is tough. Uh, this whole digital ed thing is tough and, you know, trying to figure out what, what sort. We're not playing football right now in Maryland, trying to figure out how to best reach my guys and work with them. That was, that was stressful. But then I realized that I'm going to learn things during this time that are going to make me better. I'm going to learn things during this time that I'm going to be able to take into future endeavors that's going to make me better as a leader and help me teach my guys even more. 
once I realized that, it kind of helped a lot of that stress disappear. Is it still there? I mean, absolutely. But it's certainly not as overwhelming as it was last week or the week before when we kind of started this whole thing. Um, but having that process-based mindset, knowing that this is just part of growth, that you know, this will make me better, really helped me a lot. You know, an outcome-based mind would say, man, this is the most important thing in my life. This, this barrier is holding me up from achieving that outcome. But that process base said, you know what, this is just, just a temporary setback that's going to make me better. So, I mean, that's kind of the philosophical side of things. Um, you know, stress is natural. Stress is our body's way of reacting to situations. And there's a, you know, chemical release that actually sometimes makes us perform better. All right. Lifting weights is putting your body under physical stress and it makes it stronger. The same applies for mental health. Stress helps make us mentally stronger. But we can't allow that to overwhelm us. We can't allow that to take away from who we are as leaders. You know, we talked about this day one. Set the standard. We're busy setting the standard for the people that are following us. And if we get overwhelmed and we start to make poor decisions and we break down, you can only imagine what's happening to the people that are following us. Okay, It becomes very difficult for them. Maybe we've all worked for that high stress leader. Uh, you know, they're sh short fuse. It's hard to predict what they want. It's hard to understand what they're doing, you know, and, and then it carries more stress on us. We don't know what the boss wants. We don't know what coach wants because he's not communicating. She's not communicating with us because they're overwhelmed. So now that you are the leader, keep that in mind, right? Say, I can't allow myself to be stressed. I can't allow myself to become overwhelmed. It's something I need to learn to manage use some of the techniques that I taught you, right? That immediate detachment, step back away, learn to relax, okay? Build something in that middle frame, you know, find hobbies, find ways to get away from what it is that is stressing you out. It'll give you clarity of thought, it'll help re you relax physically, which will also then help you relax mentally, which then when you go back into it, will make you a better leader. Um, you know, I've had more joy in the last week teaching my classes through Zoom than I've had the first two weeks because I kind of understood that. And, you know, I've really enjoyed the interaction I've had with my kids on Zoom th th this week, and I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Um, you know, they're, they're learning. And that's kind of the cool thing is that when I have the ability to relax and, and kind of be de-stressed, I'm better at what I do, and you'll be better at what you do. And I think that's important for leaders to understand. Um, you know, and the last thing I'll say is, you know, and this doesn't necessarily apply to everybody, is, is take care of yourself, medically speaking. Um, I have diagnosed high blood pressure, and for many years I had no idea. Um, but once I got it diagnosed, and I got treated for it, and I started to do things in my life to help out with that, it helped my stress level and anxiety level tremendously. Um, you know, I, I also found out that I have a, uh, a, a deficiency in my body, and I have to, you know, uh, take a shot every two weeks now for something else. And Again, I had no idea that was a problem, right? I had no idea it was it was an issue until I got tested. All of a sudden, now that I'm on that treatment plan, wow, it has made me take so much more joy. My stress level, my anxiety level has really declined. So take care of yourself medically. Does it mean I don't get wigged out? No. My poor wife some days, I feel bad for her. You know, I get stressed out and she, you know, is like, whoa, relax. And that's great. And that's something else I'll, I'll touch on here. See, off the cuff, just aha moment, you know? It's not, find accountability partners, you know? Um, for those of you who are married, lean on your spouses, right? If you're not married, lean on your friends. Lean on your, your family members, right? Have them tell you, hey, you're stressing out right now. You're really starting to take things too far. And that's that's a red alert, right? That's your, your early warning system to say, man, I really need to get this under control. So find those accountability partners, you know, whether it's, like I said, whether it's a spouse, um, whether it's a family member, whether it's your, your best friends, whether it's just other coworkers. Sometimes those people who we're not close to can kind of shock us into understanding we're being ridiculous, right? We might say with somebody we're close to, well, they're just, they're being, you know, emotional right now or whatever it is. But if it's somebody who we work with and they're like, hey, get it together, it's like, oh, wow, maybe I should get it together because now it's hurting me professionally, you know. So mental health matters for leaders, guys, and I think that's important to understand. I really, 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 I don't encourage you. I'm telling you, if you are overwhelmed, if you are stressed out, seek help, right? That's what we're dealing with right now, this whole COVID thing, man. I've seen so many people who are leaders freaked out because they can't access the things that they do because of COVID, 
talking to you coaches, right? I'm talking to a lot of you football coaches, and I love you guys, man. I, I know what you guys go through, and I understand the feeling you have. We have to play. We have to play. I need football. I need football. But do you, right? You're so caught up in what you need. Are you taking the opportunity to, to find new ways to work with your guys? Are you taking the opportunity to become a better person, to become a better coach? I can't change what's going on, right? We, we always preach all the time as coaches. And as leaders, we should always coach this as well. We say things like control the controllables, right? You guys have heard that 8,000 times. Uh, you know, E plus R equals O. We can't control events. We can only control our response to get a positive outcome. I, I say that myself, right? And we preach those things to our people. As leaders, we should be preaching those things to people. But are we doing that ourselves? Are we really embracing that? Are we worried about trying to control things we can't control? And when you start doing that, your mental health is going to take a nosedive. Your stress level is going to go skyrocketing. And it's going to do that that uh, that uh, exponential growth that I was talking about, right? That uh, interest, that compounding interest type deal. Really understand what you can control and what you can't control. And that will really help with your mental health as well. So guys, you know, I've kind of said a lot of things today and it's kind of off the cuff, so I apologize if it was kind of all over the place. But it's something that I really feel deeply about and I've been thinking a lot about with hearing about, you know, Dak Prescott, uh, Kevin Love, who's somebody else who's struggled with mental health issues. And there's probably a ton of our athletes, a ton of our followers who are struggling right now as well. So if we are going to set the standard, if we are going to teach people how to deal with stressful situations, how to teach people to overcome difficulties in life, to overcome obstacles and become better people, we have to practice that ourselves. We need to check our own mental health. And hopefully some of the things that I've told you today, some of the things that I've learned through my own experience that I've kind of shared with you today, hopefully those can help. So as always, you know, thank you again for listening. If you if you want to talk about more, maybe you're looking for an accountability partner. I may not know you. I may not know you at all. And I would love to talk to you about this because we don't know each other. And I think that's that's huge. We can then say, hey, we're going to hold each other accountable on these stress things. You know, you can vent to me and I don't have anybody I can tell. You know what I mean? Like, I'll keep it to myself because I don't know the same people you know. So, you know, again, I appreciate you guys listening. Reach out to me. The, the contact info is going to be there on the screen if you're watching the video. If not, on Twitter at AD underscore leadership or my own personal is at Dustin W. Mills, anchordownleadership.com. We're on uh, Instagram at AD underscore leadership, uh, on Facebook at Anchor Down Leadership. Uh, I'm on Facebook at Dustin Mills. Find us, guys. I we would love to work with you. We would love to say, hey, we'll, we would love to be your accountability partner. You know, we would love to work with you on your decision making in those stressful situations and help you as a leader and help you as your program find ways to deal with some of the high level stress that we're dealing with right now. So appreciate you guys listening. Um, you know, as always, I would say never settle for the status quo. Find new ways to challenge yourself and keep getting better every day. Appreciate you guys. I love you guys. Take care and anchor down.